Hi, my name is Harry Hamlin, and I'm a professional mountain guide, ski patroller, and avalanche educator in the Pacific Northwest. In today's video, I'm going to cover some of the finer points of single rescuer, single victim, beacon, shovel, and probe technique. Before we start, I'd like to remind viewers that while the information I'm going to be giving is factually accurate, it is no substitute for a formal avalanche education, nor is it a substitute for a large amount of practice using your own equipment. Good beacon, shovel, and probe technique is an integral part of any backcountry traveler's toolkit, but should be used in conjunction with proper terrain selection and informed snowpack analysis, and should never be a primary part of anybody's backcountry plan. A beacon search can be divided up into three distinct portions, a signal search, a course search, and a find search. In today's video, I'm going to broadly cover the signal and course portions of a beacon search and delve deeper into find search technique. The signal search. The signal search should begin at the point you last saw the victim and should be conducted carefully and efficiently. Traverse the avalanche path in a zigzag fashion and ensure that there is no more than 40 meters between your passes across the avalanche path and no more than five meters from where you turn the corner at the edge of the avalanche path. There is nothing less efficient than not obtaining a signal and then having to consequently travel back uphill. The course search. Once a signal is obtained by your beacon, the course search portion of your signal. beacon searching begins. Your beacon should indicate a direction to follow and a distance from the buried beacon indicated 21. in meters. As you grow closer to 19. the buried beacon, the numbers should decrease and the direction may change 11. slightly as your beacon may not direct you into the buried Five. beacon in a straight line. Hold the beacon Three. against your belly button and orient your body in the direction that your beacon is indicating and follow the indicator until your beacon reads three meters. So in this demonstration, you can see the beacon in the middle of our fine search radius, which is a three meter radius from the beacon that we've indicated here with the rope. Now in reality, you can't actually see the edge of the radius but you'll know you're in the fine search area when your beacon reads three meters or less. The fine search should be conducted on foot. So if I'm still on my skis at this point, I'm going to remove them. I'm going to choose an altitude above the snow that I can maintain for the entirety of the fine search. So in flatter terrain like this, I can choose a very close altitude, whereas if it's undulating or full of avalanche debris, I'm going to choose a higher altitude. As soon as I enter the fine search radius, I'm going to maintain the cardinal direction of my beacon for the entirety of the fine search. So I'm not gonna turn it from side to side. The directional functionality should be disabled when you're in the fine search radius, but if your beacon is still indicating a direction, you can ignore it. Now that I'm in the fine search radius, I'm going to maintain the direction that I entered and try and get a no the lowest number I can on my beacon. So I'm at 1.3, 1 1.1, 1 .1, 1.1, 1 1.1, 1 1.3. So my lowest number is 0 0.9. Using the lowest number that I obtained coming into the fine search area, I'm going to begin a series of brackets. Using that lowest number, I'm gonna mark it with my hand and then maintaining the beacon's cardinal direction, I'm gonna bounce the beacon in each direction and return to the middle each time to try and find a lower number. Looking something like this. So we've got 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 1.2, 1 1 1.3, 1.2, 1.6, 1.2, 0.6. So I've found a lower number. I'm gonna move my hand to mark the new lowest spot. So moving to my left gave me a lower number last time, so I'm gonna start by moving in that direction on this bracket. So. 0 0.6, 0 0.3. So I got a lower number already. I'm gonna move my hand to that new lowest number. So we know the beacon's here, but if it's buried, I'm not gonna know this. So I'm gonna try and go left again to try and get a lower number. So I've got 0 0.3, 0 0.7, 0 0.3. So I'm gonna just go through my whole bracket to try and find a new number. 0 0.3, 0 0.7, 0 0.3, 0 0.6, 0 0.3, 0 0.1. So I've got a new lowest point here, 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.1, 0 0.6. So this is my lowest point. 
right here. I'm going to mark it with a hole that I'm going to be able to see. I'm going to mark the edges of my bracket so I know where to probe. And now I'm going to put my beacon away. I need to feel confident in my find search so I don't have to do it again. And this takes a lot of practice and I encourage you to practice with your equipment as much as you can. I'm gonna begin by probing at my point of lowest distance that I marked in the snow and push the probe in all the way until I either hit ground or I go as deep as the probe can go. If I don't probe my victim on my first try, I'm going to begin to spiral outward with my probe. Moving 25 centimeters out and probing again. And then moving up and probing again. I'm gonna move in concentric circles probing to the ground or as deep as my probe will go every time. Until I probe my victim. People frequently ask how to tell the difference between probing a human and probing some sort of oddity in the snow. My best advice is to practice. Practice probing a backpack or something soft in the snow and you'll learn to feel the difference between a soft object and an icy object. When I have a positive strike, I'm going to leave my probe in the snow because I know no matter what, at the bottom of this probe is my victim. I'm gonna get a reading on the probe on how deep my victim is, approximately 75 centimeters. I'm gonna go one and a half times the depth of my victim back from the probe, downhill of the probe, and begin shoveling. When digging for an avalanche victim, focus on paddling snow rather than scooping it. Alternate sides of your body and dig perpendicular to the direction of gravity rather than parallel with it. A victim buried one meter deep requires approximately one ton of snow to be moved for extrication, so time is of the essence. Digging in this manner creates a snow platform upon which you can drag your victim once you reach them and subsequently perform first aid as needed. Practice makes perfect. Avalanche rescue can be a very high adrenaline and high stress situation. So having a large amount of training beforehand with your own equipment will make you a more effective avalanche rescuer. Thanks for watching.